Hello everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video we're talking about atomic structure. This is what it's all about. A lot of chemistry depends on atomic structure so make sure you've got a good understanding of this. We're going to be talking about subatomic particles. Don't let that term fool you. All it means is protons, neutrons and electrons. So let's take the example of a carbon atom. We've got the nucleus in the centre of the atom and in the nucleus there are some positive protons. Also with the protons you find neutrons in the nucleus. And then around the outside of the atom on shells or orbits we've got electrons. And think about electrons orbiting the nucleus like planets orbiting around the sun. So these are often called electron shells. You also see them referred to as energy levels. Now we can see here that protons have a charge of 1 plus. Remember P for proton and P for plus or positive. Neutrons are neutral or no charge. They're neither one thing or the other. The name suggests that neutrons are neutral and electrons have a charge of 1 minus. Now don't confuse these numbers with the mass of each particle. When we look at the mass of each subatomic particle, Protons have a mass of 1, neutrons also have a mass of 1. So most of the mass of the atom is in the middle in the nucleus. Electrons have a mass of 0 0.0005. In some revision guides you'll see negligible. That means hardly worth bothering about, but they do have a mass. And remember that number, 0 0.0005. We're first of all going to look at working out the number of subatomic particles. So how did I know, for example, how many protons, neutrons and electrons to draw on the previous atom of carbon? Well, let's take another example. Let's look at lithium. On the periodic table, this is the information we find for lithium. It's got an atomic number of three at the bottom and it's got a mass number of seven. So what do those numbers actually mean? Well, the atomic number is the number of protons and it's also the number of electrons. So in the case of lithium, lithium has three protons and it has three electrons. The mass number at the top is the number of protons and neutrons added together. So for lithium, we know that the number of protons and neutrons comes to seven. We know that three of those are protons because the atomic number is three. So to work out the number of neutrons, you do the mass number, take away the atomic number. So in the case of lithium, that would be seven minus three, which is four neutrons. Let's look at another example, fluorine. The box for fluorine on the periodic table has this information. It's got the symbol in the middle, F for fluorine, and then it's got the mass number of 19 at the top and the atomic number of nine at the bottom. Now the atomic number, remember, is telling us there's nine protons and also nine electrons. The mass number is 19. So that means there's 19 protons and neutrons all together when we add them together. So to work out the number of neutrons, it's the mass number minus the atomic number. So that's 19 take away 9, which is 10 neutrons. Let's test your understanding. So for each of the following elements, say how many protons, neutrons and electrons their atoms will have. So on a piece of paper, just write down your answers, pause the video and then check back in in a few minutes time and see if you got them correct. So nitrogen has seven protons because the bottom number is seven. It's got seven neutrons because we do the mass number, take away the atomic number. And it's also got seven electrons because that's also the bottom number, the atomic number. For potassium, that would work out at 19 protons, 20 neutrons and 19 electrons. Sulfur would be 16 protons, 16 neutrons and 16 electrons. Sodium would be 11 protons, 12 neutrons and 11 electrons and oxygen would be 8 protons, 8 neutrons 
and 80 electrons. So well done if you got all of those correct. Here's a common exam question I've seen time and time again as a teacher on the GCSE exam paper and also it's one that I've marked many times as a GCSE examiner. So use your knowledge of subatomic particles to explain why atoms are neutral overall. So I'll show you a model answer. We need to say that atoms have the same number of positive protons and negative electrons so the charges cancel each other out. And in a question like this, you would get one mark for saying positive protons, one mark for saying negative electrons, and then they've got the same number. And you'd also get a mark for saying those charges will cancel each other out. I'll show you an example to show you what I mean by that answer. So for example, if we think about oxygen that we worked out has got eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons. Well, the eight protons have an eight plus charge altogether. The eight electrons come to eight negative and eight plus and eight minus cancel each other out. So overall, the atoms got no charge. If you found the video useful, please remember to like, subscribe to my page, Revised Chemistry with Mr. B. Thank you for watching.